and welcome to a Q&A for Colorado Dragon Boat Film Festival. My name is Sarah Moore and I am the Executive Director for the nonprofit Colorado Dragon Boat. And today we are honored to have the filmmakers of Duo Pandemia with us here today. Um, so I just want to go ahead and start us off real quick by maybe having everybody um, go ahead and introduce themselves. Um, Carlton, can we start with you? Yeah, I'm Carlton Hester. I'm a composer and interdisciplinary artist. Great. Rebecca? Hi, my name is Rebecca and I am an artist and visual artist and also a multimedia artist. Wonderful. Cecilia? Hello everyone. I'm Cecilia Wu. I'm the co-composer uh, with uh, Carlton. Uh, so nice to see you. Wonderful. And Patricia? Hi, I'm Patricia Saucedo. Uh, I'm artist, visual artist, uh, and music uh, autodidacta. Uh, Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Now I'd love to um, kind of just jump in and see if uh, Carlton, if you wouldn't mind just kind of explaining the inspiration for creating this series um, and specifically uh, the, the conclusion, um, episode 14, but this is an absolutely amazing series that we're looking forward to the release in, in April. But if you wouldn't mind telling us uh, behind the scenes, what, what started it off for you? Well, what started it off is a life, lifelong exploration of Egyptian mysteries and looking at um, transition into the netherworld um, that comes from, starts with the wing of hearts, you know, if you know the, the image of the wing of hearts and that kind of thing. And so the quantum elders come from that region, from that nano region that's um, purely consciousness. And so this series began, um, it, it, it actually began about 10 years ago as something I called um, divine particles vision. We're talking about each particle, everything's a particle, whether it's a sun, a galaxy, a universe, whatever is a particle and, and has sub particles. So like the old term as of above, so below, there's all these layers that go omnidirectional, uh, omnidirectionally and in and out and all this kind of stuff. So. All of that is a part of the process that we're going through to create the umbrella um, title is Quantum Elders Consciousness Vaccine. Um, and that starts with an introduction that kind of transports us into the quantum world. Um, and Rebecca does a uh, guided meditation that takes us from the terrestrial real world into the world of the quantum elders. And so we spend 14 episodes there. Some of them are long. Um, Rebecca just finished one that's 13 minutes and plus long. But um, there are um, 13 of them all together. Well, 14 counting the guiding, uh, um, guided meditation. And then we come back to Earth. And coming back to Earth is where we're focused right now, is on the dual pandemic. Um, when we come back, we, we went to get a, a consciousness vaccine for that into the quantum world. And so the episode that we end on is the dual pandemic um, that's talking about um, the, the dual part of that pandemic is um, the COVID-19 and racism. So we, we focus in on those two things. And so, um, all, well, I, if we use that as, if I go back to the end and talk about that, um, it started with um, Cecilia. Um, Cecilia um, kind of, well, Cecilia introduced me to Rebecca and Rebecca kind of worked with on the video and audio ev almost every day for the last year <laughs> because there's that much depth that has gone into each little increment. Um, I began with the composition um, of for one for each of these episodes that was just done. I just um, did it mainly on, on synthesizer, just played it in all the parts and got sounds and this kind of thing and laid out the framework and then took it to Rebecca and I didn't expect her to understand as much as she understood. <laughs> and with that level of understanding, it just went on and on and on. And then with Cecilia, um, we had worked on some earlier parts together and some grants and stuff and one of them didn't work out. And then so later on, she just says, hey, why don't we just do something <laughs> and to, to 
to take, you know, to address this issue of racism and stuff like that. And so we did that. I, I said, well, I don't have much time <laughs> as usual, but I'll do something quick, which I always do. I do everything quick. Um, and so I, um, she said, okay, well, let's do a, a, do a composition. I said, I've never done that ever. I said, so that's why I'll do it. <laughs> I've never done it. And of course you asked so nicely. Um, and so we did that. And so it's funny because it ended for me um, in the summer, right as the wildfires were happening. And so the very ending of this piece came at a time when I had like five minutes to leave the house. <laughs> and I said, I better get this done because they said, oh, we don't know when you're going to be back, if it's going to be months or whatever, and the house might not be there. So it ended with, um, as I played a quick saxophone ending to it within five minutes and setting everything up and everything. And so I, I can hear that sense of urgency, which is nice coming back to earth for that last movement. And so that's kind of a short version of a very long process. Wow, that, that is amazing. And I, I hope that your house was okay from the wildfire. Well, we came back and it was okay. We have to do some painting and, and you know, spraying, you know, high, high um, intensity uh, spraying. But yeah, it was standing, everything's here. Good, good. Yeah, and I think 2020 was just, so much was happening. And this this last episode just really is is so emotional um, for, for me watching it and just really realizing how much has happened just within that last year and has just been going on for, for forever. And I really appreciate um, your series addressing this, um, coming back to earth. I like, I like that um, uh, analogy there. Um, and I would love to hear more about just the production um, in general of these films. Well, uh, since um, um, Patricia wants to, I haven't read her comment, but I want to say a little bit about the interaction with Patricia. We go back like maybe five years, four or five years when I was in Peru, in Lima, Peru. And we did something at the Wakas there, um, the pyramids there. We projected onto the pyramids um, some video and I did um, some electric acoustic kind of thing. And so that's where we got acquainted. And then afterwards, she's worked on like three or four videos um, um, for concerts that we've done for April in Santa Cruz ever since. So we've become, all of us have become gradually finely tuned, in tune with each other. And so um, Patricia was able to just go in and really sense what was going on. Um, just as, as Rebecca has with, with having to do the same kind of thing over the period of an hour and 40 minutes. You know? But um, Patricia um, went in and understood what we were trying to do um, in terms of all the levels, in terms of the approaches to finding a consciousness, consciousness on vaccine for both racism and COVID-19. Um, so she just keyed in on that. So all of the things that you see are just completely from her interpretation of, of what we were thinking about. Wow. wow. That is absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. I would love to go to um, Cecilia. Would you mind telling us a little bit about your part in the production and how you felt during the creation? Yeah, um, basically, I think it is an honor that I can work with my very, very good friend and uh, my Buddhist um, master, I would say, Rebecca. Um, so we have been, you know, um, knowing each other for a long time. So this is actually our first collaboration too, right? So um, we've been talking about collaboration like a life lifelong, but this is the first piece that we ever actually do something together. Um, so um, basically my role in this whole series is uh, just a co-composer and audio engineer for the last the conclusion piece. And I really am grateful that uh, Dr. Hester is having me in this wonderful, uh, wonderful, important, um, you know, series of his composition. So, um, but I really wanted to give that to uh, Rebecca and Kaltman and to continue that because they are actually, you know, the, the, the heart, the core of this, of this series. So. Thank you. Yeah, Rebecca, would you mind going into a little bit of detail? Certainly. Thank you, Cecilia. And it's really an honor to work with everyone. And in this, in this process, it's, we really went through a lot in 2020. And I, I'm really very grateful to be working on this project 
concurrent with all the events happening. In a way, it provides, it gives me a backbone to, to face and process the events as they go on and then also channel all of it into the, into the visual layers of the, of the project. So, uh, so I'm, I will be mostly talking about the conscious vaccine part of the project. Um, because that's the that's my part of the contribution. I'm the video, videographer of the project, and I put everything in, and also wrote algorithms. There are parts of the video that are algorithm driven. That um, the algorithm is uh, the music driven. The algorithm takes Professor Hester's music and combine it with the visual layers that some of my contributions, some of other artists' contribution, and to put it all together into this final film. So I'm really grateful to be working on it and then pulling various pieces. And it's almost like a it's like an art activism thing that really helps me to anchor my experience and express. And I'm also, I'm also a chaplain at Stanford, Buddhist chaplain at Stanford and inspired by the, the process of creating art and using art as a healing, processing and transcending agent of a lot of the, um, of all, a lot of our experiences. I'm also working on proposing uh, a campus-wide ritual at Stanford. So it's a lot of the inspirations going on and a lot of, a lot of things hope to share with the world through the project. Yes, thank you. And yes, watching this um, episode, and I'm excited to watch all the others, but it's just, it's it's so emotional um, for me. And what I got out of um, this episode was just a need for, for um, action. And I was just wondering, maybe Carlton, if you wouldn't mind discussing um, what you hope to be the result of the, the whole series, um, and uh, specifically the last episode as well. Um, it's all evolutionary is like in this round I just was lucky enough to run into kindred spirits who were on the same frequency the whole thing is about vibration and the structure of the piece is based on vibration on the overtone series and this kind of thing because a lot of the Egyptian stuff is base 12 and so everything is kind of laid out in that base 12 kind of fashion that's why the 14 episodes is the Overtone series, 12 of the Overtone series, plus an intro and a coda, and a coda but it's, it's essentially base 12. And within and without, everything's kind of based on that kind of construction. So what I hope to achieve is to uh, continuity of the process, because everything's about process and sustainability. And the way that we're going to try to sustain this process is to have an Afrofuturism year-long festival next year where this will just be one of the pieces and there'll be pieces from all over the world of different types, um, you know, music, dance, martial arts, you know, um, you know, a lot of seminars and a lot of other aspects that sustain, that sustain these same concepts. And Afrofuturism is defined in a way that's, um, com that includes everybody on the planet. It's not exclusionary, it's inclusionary. And that's what is, has been really great about our team. We have people from Latin America, from Asia, from Africa, from all over on the team. So we get the essence of that, not by just talking about it, but by actually, well, actually by not talking about it, we just kind of jump into it, you know, because that's the, that's the reality of the situation. And we just happen to be of similar frequency, you know, because of the things that we've gone through. And then later, you know, like when we have to give a talk, Rebecca's going to be doing a talk for my class on, um, Cecilia's done a, a talk um, at, the, at UCSC, he's going to be doing another one in April. It's only then that I discover, oh yeah, yeah, you know, you know we're, we're also talking about African and Asian things and, and Latin American things, yeah, but actually we're just, we're talking about universal concepts, you know, things that bind the universe together and um, like with the quantum, well, with the quantum elders, it's a matter of getting into the non-molecular universe. We're so fixed on the unconsciousness that drives society and that's fixed on the molecular universe and mainly, you know, even narrowed down more than that, money, you know, capitalism and colonialism and all that kind of stuff. So it's good 
as um, Rebecca um, mentioned, to go to the spiritual world, because the spiritual world is one of the expressions of the non-molecular universe. And so um, it's just good to have like minds that can travel on this route with this film, but also will travel in the next iteration, you know, like with the Afrofuturism um, year long thing. And then hopefully just on and on and on, you know, in, in ways that bring a real consciousness vaccine. It's not, it's not a abstract concept. We're talking realism. We know that it heals. We know that it brings results. And so, um, yeah, we'll, we'll continue it. How, I don't know, because we're all improvisers. So we can't really say how it will continue, but it will continue. You'll have structure and it'll have, um, you know, a lot of um, uh, unity and interconnectedness and all of those things. That is wonderful. Thank you so much. Because I think that is very, very needed, um, especially after the last year we have and just moving forward as a society and as, humans, we, we need things like this. And, and this uh, episode is so beautiful and so powerful um, to watch. So thank you very much. Well, and I you. would love to um, maybe chat a little bit about um, what we can expect for uh, the full series premiere happening April 30th, I believe you mentioned. Yeah. Um, what, what can we expect? Where can we see it? Um, what can we do to help? Um, we're going to have it up in a couple of places. One is going to be on Facebook in our April and Santa Cruz phase. This, this concert is a part of a month long concert series. It's called April and Santa Cruz Festival of New Music. And it begins, I think the 2nd of April and it goes to the 30th of April. We have the closing concert. And there'll be a whole range of different kinds of concerts. Um, there'll be a hip hop contest that has a concert that will be the final of, for that concert. And two of the winners of that contest will be a part of this recording, a, a part of the um, Quantum Elders Consciousness Vaccine concert. They'll get a chance to partic uh, participate in that. But there's percussion ensembles, there's a wind quintet that's playing a lot of student compositions, all our DMA students' compositions. Um, there are pianists that'll be playing solo compositions. There's a guitar duet. Uh, there's a whole range of different um, genres and different ensembles that'll be playing all month in April. And so these concerts will be, um, well, this concert will be the last one of that whole series. And, and so um, in order to, I'll, I'll send you a link because I don't have the link in, on top of my head. I'll, I'll send you a link so that um, everybody can, you can put it on the website and everybody can uh, tune into it. Perfect, I will definitely do that. Oh, wow. This is absolutely amazing. And I wish I could talk to you for, for hours on end about this, because I think there's there's so much depth, like you said, to to this series. Um, but I'll just kind of end it with um, asking maybe what your favorite um, part of the creation of this series has been for, for each of you. And then uh, maybe Rebecca, would you mind starting? Okay, sure. Yes. Um, my favorite part is really bring the music and have the music drive the visuals and bring everything together in a, in a way that are unexpected even for me before, a lot of times before creating a scene. Just most all of the footages are created in this composite way. And I would, I would only have an amazing idea about how it will look like, but then by putting it together and channeling it through and it shows up on my screen is this wonderful footages. I think that's my favorite part. It's absolutely beautiful. Cecilia, how about you? Yeah, I wanted to say this is the first time I actually uh, collaborate um, a composition with an African-American composer and that's this major because all of those music elements are actually very new to me. And, you know, this is very rich in terms of the compositional um, structure that uh, Dr. Hester gave me. And, um, you know, it's just really, sometimes I really need to, you know, think about this and meditate on the whole uh, musical energy in order to put my energy in there and make them harmonized. So that was like the compositional, um, you know, process was the most, uh, the most interesting and the, you know, my favorite part of this. Thank you, uh, Dr. Hester. Uh -huh. And then Carlton, how about you? I'm just working, like I said, with um, great minds 
great creativity, great people, um, and seeing how things evolve just very organically um, when you have the right ingredients. Um, and it's, it's funny because I'm communicating uh, with, you know, with language barriers and all these kinds of things don't matter at all when it comes to creativity. Um, you know, because we're able to, with Patricia, you know, I didn't even understand, I didn't even know that she didn't speak that well, because we always write. <laughs> you know, we, and so, and we're, we're dealing with um, artistic subject matter. And so that becomes the language. And so it's just been really nice to watch how things come together. You just kind of create a nucleus and then watch that nucleus evolve, you know, from seed through time into harvest is, is really interesting for me. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I absolutely love um, how all of you have been brought and brought together um, for this series and very excited to um, see the premiere of it in April and then um, looking forward to just having a year long um, event um, for having more from from all of you. So thank you so much for being a part of this quick Q&A. We really appreciate hearing more about the depth of Duo Pandemia and then really excited to hear about the full series coming out later this year. And thank you so much. Thank you, okay, Sarah. I just want to say thank you, Sarah. Duo, Duo Pandemic. Duo, oh, thank you. Duo mm -hmm. Pandemic. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Mm -hmm. yes, thank you for inviting us, taking the time, and talking about it with us. Of course, thank you.